بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتمم بالخير قد درس الأول لسن ون حاشم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hashim, may Allah's peace, mercy and blessings be on you. So now we can see here that Assalamu uh, is Mubtada and Alaikum is Khabar Jar Majroor. Wa means and. Rahmatullahi, Rahma is used as Mudaf and Lafz al-Jalala is Mudaf ilayh. Allah's mercy. Wa and Barakatuhu. Barakat is the plural of Barakatun. Barakatun is singular and Barakat is plural and when we have the attached pronoun that means it is mudaf mudaf alayh so that's why it has to be light barakatuhu and the blessings on you now let's seek our guidance from the quran about our greetings allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the quran a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa idha huyitum bi tahiyyatin fahiyu fahiyu bi ahsan فَحِيُّ بِإِحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا And when you are greeted with a greeting, greet in return with one better than it, or at least return it in a like manner. That means when someone greets us and he says, As-salamu alaykum, in return we say, Wa alaykum as-salam. And if someone says, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, then we say, Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And if someone says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. <clears throat> then we return it to him saying the same <clears throat> as we can see over here. Al Madarisu wa alaikum. And we know that meme is sakin. And meme, whenever we connect meme with al, we connect it with dhamma. Wa alaikum as salamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So now, according to the verse of the Quran, that when you are greeted, return it. In a better than uh, than as it is, or in a like manner. So similarly, uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, according to the Hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when we say Assalamu alaikum, we get we get ten hasanat, and when we say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, we get twenty, and when we say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, and then we get uh, thirty hasanat, and this is the mafhum, mafhum of the Hadith. So uh, this is how we greet, uh, like in our Islamic greetings. Hashimun, كيف حالك يا أستاذ? How are you, O teacher? لعلك بخير. I hope you are doing fine. Now we have learned about a nominal sentence, and we know that a nominal sentence, الجملة الإسمية, consists of subject and predicate, مبتدا and خبر. Sometimes we have Particles that are used for the purpose of emphasis. We have learned in the introduction of the lesson about inna, and similarly we have the sister of inna, which is called la'alla. Now, what happens when we use la'alla? We need to see over here that uh, when we use la'alla or inna, then we do not call this subject or predicate. Then what happens? Uh, the subject or mubtadaun changes into ismu la'alla. And similarly, predicate khabarun changes into khabaru la'alla. So now it basically owns the whole sentence. So not only the meaning will change. Uh, for example, we say anta bikhayrin or anta bikhayr. Uh, then you, it means you're fine. But when we say la'alla ka uh, that means I hope you are doing fine. And now when we get the meaning of hope, la'alla, so now the sentence has changed from a uh, normal nominal sentence to an emphatic nominal sentence. And now we will say that ka is ismu la'alla and bikhayrin is khabaru la'alla. Hope you are doing fine. فَلَعَلَّا كَبَاقِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ And based on the same, uh, you know, uh, the use of la'alla, we have a verse of the Qur'an. Now basically, what's the idea behind this? The idea is that when we learn one rule of the Arabic language, we try to learn one example. And the best way of learning one example is to learn an example from the Quran. So for example, if in book two, we learn, let's say 80 rules. And similarly, if we learn every rule with one of the verse of the Quran, that means we will also get the ajar of memorizing 80 verses of the Quran as well. So that's why the best way is to go with one verse of the Quran with one example. 
So here we have la'allaka bi-khayrin and similarly we have the verse of the Quran fala'allaka bakhiyun. So we can see over here la'allaka. So this will be ismu la'allah and bakhiyun will be khabaru la'allah and we know that khabaru la'allah will always be marfur. Ismu la'allah will be mansub. So we will say that this is mansub in the place of nasb and this is marfur. And and when we look at the translation, perhaps you grieve or grieve yourself to death, O Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, over them. Now in the Quran, we know that la'alla gives the meaning of hope or fear. But whenever you look at the translation in the Quran, you will always find it with the translation of perhaps. You will not find the words hope or fear. But then from the context, we will come to know that whether it is used for the hope or it is used for the fear. Al-Madarisu, the teacher, Alhamdulillah, it's a regular nominal sentence, Alhamdulillah will be Mubtadaun, and Lillahi is Jar Majroor, it will be Khabaran, Alhamdulillah. Wa kaifa haluka anta ya Hashimu? And how are you, O Hashim? Now again, we have something new over here. When we say kaifa haluka, that means how are you? But what is anta doing over here? So it we have ka, it means anta, and then we have anta. So that means that there is a repetition of, of the words. So is it for a reason? Of course, yes. Uh, whenever we see an expression like this, we need to know that it is for a reason. And what's the reason? It is used for the purpose of emphasis, a tawkid emphasis. So when I say kaifa haluka, ya Hashimu, how are you, O Hashim? That's perfectly all right. But when I add anta to that, kaifa haluka anta ya Hashimu, then it becomes more emphatic. Now you can see that uh, the beauty of these books, like when we, whenever we have one idea, we will have different ways of expressing that idea. So first we learned about la illa. Similarly, we will learn about inna. And now also we are learning that after like uh, the, the, the subject, if we have uh, a pronoun that is used over there, the similar pronoun after like we have ka and similar to this. So that means it is also used for emphasis. So that means the whole of this lesson is about the emphasis in Arabic language. Now we uh, uh, see over here an example from the Quran again. So we have seen one example of la'alla and now we see one example of emphasis of at-tawqeed. Ya Adam muskun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah. Now, uskun is, as we know, that this is fil al-amr. It's a command. And we, we know that in command, every command has an inbuilt doer in it. So it's basically, ya adamu, anta uskun, or uskun ant. But when we say anta uskun, you live, as we can see over here, if you look at the translation, dwell you, so we already have over here, uh, dwell you, uh, uskun. But when we have anta over here, so it is used for emphasis. So, Ya Adam, muskun anta wa zawjuka al-jannata. O Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise. In English translation, we will not see it. But in Arabic translation, in Arabic it's basically, O Adam, you live and you and your wife in Jannah. So, subhanAllah, that is, that is what we call emphasis or tawqeed in the Arabic language. Ana uhibbuka kathiran ya Hashimu. I like or love you a lot, O Hashim. So now we have here Ana, uh, which will be, of course, uh, it's a nominal sentence, subject and predicate. So Ana is subject. And we know now we should know that a verbal sentence can also be a predicate. So it's Uhibbuka is a verb, and a verbal sentence can also be a predicate. Ana Uhibbuka Kathiran, Ya Hashimu, I like you a lot, O Hashim. Innaka Talibun Dakiyun. Now we can see over here that we have the introduction of inna, which is used for emphasis. So whereas ismu inna, of course, ka, all the attached pronouns, please remember that all the attached pronouns, like hu, huma, hum, ha, huma, hunna, ka, kuma, kum, ki, kuma, kunna, e, and no, and na, all the attached pronouns, they will, whenever they come with inna or one of the sisters of inna, and they will be ismu inna straight away. So the attached pronoun becomes ismu inna. And now we have to, to look for khabaru inna and we need to know that khabaru inna is always marfur. Ismu inna is always mansub. For example, inna allaha ghafuran rahimun. Inna allaha. So ismu inna is always mansub. 
and khabaru inna is always marfu so it will be talibun and then we have indeed you are a student and now we have these adjectives that are being used for the student talibun zakiyun intelligent wow means and mujtahidun hard working wow means and dhu khuluqin well mannered so the teacher says indeed and we need to know that inna is translated as indeed indeed you are an intelligent hard working and well mannered student <clears throat> and of course we have to see the example from the quran as well so uh, in the quran we have um, the complete verses ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadha fa malaqi but this is enough because this is only for the purpose of uh, of uh, example so we can see over here similar to what we have over here so we have ka and ka over here we have inna and inna over here so inna is used for emphasis and ka means uh, ismu inna and kadihun as as we know that khabaru inna is always marfu ila rabbika kadhan fa malaqi and then we complete the sentence indeed you are laboring toward your lord with great exertion so we can see over here uh, one example from the quran so we have learned three ideas so far and we have seen three examples from the quran amin pakistan anta am min al hindi ya hashimu okay now we have here a beautiful expression we have the combination of hamzatul istifham a and the combination of am and we need to know that they always come together and what what is the name of this hamza this hamza has got a specific name and it is called hamzatu ataswiya hamza of equality why do we call it hamza of equality uh, what well, it is called hamza of equality because whatever comes after hamza for example min pakistana should come after um so a uh, and am um always come together and uh, we can see that here we have a preposition and here we have a preposition as well pakistana has fatha because this is mamnu min asarf and we know that mamnu min asarf do not accept kasra so that's why it has to be min pakistana al hind is the name of the country as well it is also mamnu min asarf but we know that whenever al is used with a noun then the noun can take a kasra it will accept kasra so that's why we have min al hindi this al what kind of al is this would that mean that it will become double a definite india india of course not it is al azaida extra alf al which is used in the arabic language as well so amin pakistan anta am min al hindi ya hashimu um so the translation as we can see over here is oh hashim are you from pakistan or india now what is the difference between uh, this expression and between au how would i know that i need to use am or i need to use au the difference is very simple we use au only for general statements only for statements we can say for example khud hadha au dhaka take this or take that so but when we have am then am am has to always come with hamzatul taswiya or hamza of equality so am cannot come together as of now we should know that am comes with the with the combination of a whereas au does not take hamzatul istifham or it does not take hal before it so we use au for the statement and we use am with hamzatul taswiya and i believe inshallah it's clear now <clears throat> example from the quran anzartahum am lam tunzirhum la yu'minun so we have a and after that we have a verb and similarly am and after am we have a verb now you might be thinking like what about lam <clears throat> as we know that lam cannot come by itself it has come with the mudhari for the negation so it is basically uh, adatu al jazm which makes the mudhari majzum and also adatu nafi which makes the mudhari <clears throat> negative So basically we have to focus on the the verb that comes after a it is andhartahum and similarly we have am tundhirhum however this is a you know particle of negation and it can come with the verb as well so now we can see that after a we have verb and similarly after am we have a verb as well it is the same whether you warn them or not or so it gives the meaning of whether or not they will not believe so now we have four points and we have four verses of the quran so now what you need to do 
you write one point on your notebook and then write one example from the Quran and try to memorize it. <clears throat> Hashimun, Hashim. Now our concepts are clear now. So we can go through the text now, inshallah, easily. Shouldn't be any issues. Inni minal Hindi. Indeed, I'm from India. So when you're looking for ismu inna, so ya al mutakallim will be ismu inna, and minal minal Hindi will be khabaru inna. Indeed, I'm from India. Al mudarisu was the miluk al ladi, and your colleague or classmate, al ladi kharaja who left maka with al ana now minal fasli from the from the classroom, and we know that min is an exception. Whenever we connect a uh, uh, sakin, we connect with kasra. When we connect it with al. But min is always connected with fatha. So it will be min al fasli. Ahuwa aydan min al hindi. Is he also from, from India? So now it's, I think, very simple. Everything is clear. Oh, the only thing that we know that alladhi is uh, uh, ismul masul and it is used to connect uh, two, two things or two ideas. And after that, we should have either a verbal sentence or we should have a nominal sentence. In this case, we have a verbal sentence, kharajamaka. As we know that a verbal sentence starts with a verb and nominal sentence starts with a noun. Hashimun, la innahu min Pakistana. No, indeed, he's from Pakistan. So we will say that who is ismu inna and min Pakistana is khabaru inna. Indeed, he is from Pakistan. Al Madarisu teacher, inna sa'ataka. So now we should know that after inna, uh, the noun is always mansub. So as we can see here, inna sa'ataka jamilatun. Uh, why we have to have jamilatun? Because sa'a is feminine and ismu inna is always uh, mansub and khabaru inna is always marfur. So it has to be marfu. Inna sa'ataka jamilatun ya, ya Hashimu. Indeed, your watch is beautiful, O Hashim. Aminil yabani hiya. So now you might be thinking like, uh, we have, uh, where is um? So we should know uh, that um is mahdhuf, that has been omitted. And this is the beauty of the Arabic language, uh, that sometimes we have an expression where something is omitted or it has been dropped. So it's basically Amin al Yabani here, Amin al Hindi. So Amin al Hindi is dropped over here. Hashimun la innaha. So here ha refers to, of course, sa, the watch. It's feminine. So innaha, min al Hindi. So ha will be ismu inna and min al Hindi will be khabaru inna. Al Madaris with the teacher, a ghaliyatun hiya am rakhisatun. So now we can see here that we have a combination of a and am. And after uh, we have uh, adjective and after am um, we have adjective. So is this uh, is this uh, cheap or expensive? Hashimun innaha, ha refers to the watch. Innaha rakhisatun jiddan. It is very cheap. So jiddan is very, it is very cheap. Innaha bimiyati rubiyatin faqat. It is indeed only 100 rupees. And we know that uh, uh, Mia is always used uh, as as mudaf and rubiyatin is mudaf ilah and after miyat, miyatun or after miyah uh, the noun will always be singular and it will always be majroor as we know it is it is used as mudaf mudaf ilah <clears throat> al mudarrisu kam akhan laka ya hashimu how many brothers do you have o hashim now here we need to know about kam this is kam al istifhamia which is used to ask a question and after come, a noun should have three things. What are those three things? It should be singular. Akhan, is this singular? Yes. It should be mansub. Is it mansub? Yes. It should be indefinite. Nakira, is this indefinite? Yes. So when three conditions are met, that means that this come is used to ask a question. Please remember that after that, we cannot use plural. We cannot say come ikhwanu laka. No, we have to say come akhan laka. As we see that after this, the noun is singular. O Hashimu, O Hashim, how many brothers do you have, O Hashim? Now, in English, we say br brothers, right? We have to use the plural. But in Arabic, we have to use the singular. And that is the, these are the small differences that we need to know about between Arabic and English. <clears throat> Hashimun, li thalathatu ikhwatin. I have three brothers. <clears throat> now, li is jar majroor. And thalathatu ikhwatin, we know that the numbers from three to ten, they are opposite in gender. Akhun is masculine, so the the first part or mudaf will be always feminine. So if you have 
the noun, the real noun is masculine, the verb will be feminine. So, li thalathatu ikhwatin, I have three brothers. Okay, now here, <clears throat> li is jar majroor. And please remember that jar majroor can never ever be mubtada. It will always be a khabar. The place can be inter is, is can be changed. For example, uh, mubtada can come after the khabar and khabar can come before mubtada. But still it will remain khabar and it will remain mubtada. Also one more thing we need to know that uh, whenever, okay, one thing here that for the brothers and sisters, uh, we always use the preposition of luck. We say luck and li. Come akhan laka li thalathatu ikhwat. And we should never say in the thalathatu ikhwat and that is wrong. For the blood relationships, we always use the preposition of la. That's number one. Number two, um, we can see over here that after whenever jar majroor, most of the times, whenever jar majroor come in the beginning of the sentence, after that, uh, the khabar is a common noun. It is an indefinite noun. So, so we can see over here that li is jar majroor and it comes before mubtada and mubtada generally after jar majroor will be nakira. It will be indefinite as we can see over here. So this is a very important example that we have to remember. Similarly, we have in the Quran, fi qulubihim maradun. So fi qulubihim jar majroor and after that maradun is a def indefinite noun. Similarly, fiha aynun jariyatun. Fiha jar majroor aynun jariyatun. Fiha sururun marfu'atun. Sururun marfu'atun is also indefinite noun. So whenever we have jar majroor, uh, so similarly is jar majroor and hablun is a common noun so please remember indefinite noun so whenever jar majroor come before the subject before mubtada then generally uh, the mubtada will be an indefinite noun or it will be nakira as we can see over here al-mudarisu the teacher atul labun hum are they are the students, um, it's a just normal, normal sentence. Hashimun la innahum tujarun. No, indeed, they are merchants. Al Madarisu wakam ukhtan laka. And how many uh, sisters do you have? So now we can see over here that after kam, the noun is uh, singular, it is mansub, and it is nakira. So that's why we have to use these three things. We should make sure that these three things are met. And how many sisters do you have? Hashimun li arba'a akhawatin, arba'u, in fact, sorry. Li arba'u akhawatin, I have four sisters. Now, ukhtun is feminine, and we know that the numbers from 3 to 10, they are opposite. So now, we have to use the number is opposite, so we have to use the number that is for masculine. So masculine is arba'u. If it is feminine, it should be arba'atu. But because the sister, ukhtun is feminine, and that's why... Uh, the first part of the numbers from 3 to 10 has to be masculine. Like we have in the in the, in the Quran, سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا Laylatun is feminine, but in the Quran we have سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ And يَوْمٌ is masculine, but we have ثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ So, uh, Jar Majroor, when we have Jar Majroor, when it is, uh, it takes the place of, it comes in the place of subject, it cannot take the place of Mubtadaun. Then, as we have seen that after the subject has to be, generally it has to be an indefinite noun. And it has to be marfu because we know both subject and predicate, they are marfu. Afil Hindi hunna al-ana, and we know that for for ladies we use hunna. Afil Hindi hunna al-ana, are they in India now? So here I have four sisters, are they in India now? La, Hashimun la, inna hunna. Indeed, they are huna, hunak, uh, huna, uh, sorry, here. This is also a dharf adverb. Bil Madina til in the Madina Manawara. Ma with Abi, my father, wa ummi, and my mother. No, indeed, they are over here. So huna is here in Madina uh, Manawara with my father and my mother, as we know that Abi is my father and ummi is my mother. Al Madarisu, the teacher, at Palibatun Hunna, are the students. Now, also, this is the Usloob of Arabic language. 
generally when we have a subject and predicate we say hunna talibatun they are students hunna talibatun but if we have hamzatul istifham before it then generally we have we will say a talibatun hunna and again this is the uslub of the arabic language so what happens now subject as we know that uh, 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 a definite noun is a subject so mubtada will we know we should know that the places of subject and predicate keep on changing so it's not a problem so here we see hunna is subject and talibatun is predicate because hunna is a definite noun and talibatun is indefinite noun hashimun la inna hunna indeed they are so hunna will be ismu inna and mudarrisatun will be khabaru inna bil madrasati athaniyati indeed they are teachers in the secondary school as we can see over here so i'm sure inshallah uh, the concepts are clear about the use of la'alla uh, about the use of inna similarly the difference between au and a and am and similarly tawqeed so inshallah these are the things that you need, need to note down now we have ajib anil asilatil atiya answer the following questions min aina hashimun where is hashim from so does anyone remember uh, huwa min al hindi uh, he is from india ayuhibbuhu al mudarris does his teacher like him or love him does anyone remember naam yuhibbuhu al mudarris yes his teacher likes him min aina saatuhu where is min aina always come together min aina saatuhu where is his watch from and we know that his watch is from india saatuhu min al hindi his watch is from india become here how much is this and also we need to know that some sometimes come can come with a preposition of be become here how much is this and we know that it is by 100 riyals here bi miyati rubiyatin in fact this is 100 rupees kam akhan lahu how many brothers does he have um anyone remembers ya lahu thalathatu ikhwatin he has three brothers kam ukhtan lahu how many sisters does he have and we know that he has four sisters lahu arba'u akhawatun and the last question we have aina akhawatuhu where are his sisters and we know that they are in madina munawwara hunna fil madinatil munawwarati so uh, we are done with the first lesson and inshallah in the next we are done with the first part of the lesson first exercise and inshallah the next lesson we will start with exercise 2 subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh